Hello, Kansas City. Welcome to another wonderful day out there. Uh, my name is Chris Odom. I am an excited host and creator of this little show called Life After. Uh, I got the wonderful chance to spend a lot of my years working in a particular school. And when we got in the midst of all this pandemic, we started looking for ways to interact and you know, kind of contact people who were also not all at work. And so now that we're some of us back in work, we're keeping on with these interviews and uh, joining me today is a wonderful person that I knew from back there at Paseo Academy. Uh, at, and welcome to the show, Maisha Wright. Hello, thank you for having me. I appreciate the invite. Yeah. Makes me feel special. Well, very cool. <laughs> it's a neat kind of byproduct of the stage and uh, getting a chance to do this. And I really do love that chance is to give back the platform um, and to hear from the voices. And again, make you feel special. It, that's, you know, a bonus. So yes. Kansas City, you're in for a treat. Uh, tell us, Maisha, when you came out of Paseo, what year? And what you really kind of still think about or what your takeaways were from that experience? Oh, I graduated from Paseo in 2004. It's hard to believe in two years, that would be 20 years. Woo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe Isn't it has cool? been that long. And then I'm, it's funny because you mentioned my glasses. I get compliments on my glasses. I always make the joke. I turned 35 last year and it hit me like a ton of bricks this being one of them. So I'm like, well, if I got to start wearing glasses, make them cute. <laughs> They're very cool. Yeah, I can see why you get compliments. Yes. So tell us what you remember that year, like it was recent. I do too, which is so, so strange because it certainly wasn't. But the things we remember, you know, seem so important to us, like that final year in high school. So what do you remember about that year? What did you do that year? Um, are there any takeaways that you still kind of value from that experience? Yeah, um, I remember a lot from that year, just really being able to say, hang out and say goodbyes to friends. Um, I do remember kind of filling out that FAFSA, trying to figure out where we're going to go for college. We're all making our um, plans and who's going to go to this college, who's going to be roommates at this college. Um, finalizing kind of graduation, having that surreal moment, like, you know, life happens after after this point. Um, and just really just it's the name of our show, right? Yes. Life happens. <laughs> is it really? Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's, really, it's called life after, but I would life say after. Yes. There's a lot of life after, right? Like yes, somehow it starts life. turning up a notch and all of a sudden there's a lot of life right after high school. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I couldn't remember if it was our last year of high school or was it the year before that I took the shot of running for student council president, ended up being the student council president for the school that year. <laughs> wow. And so that yeah. stayed with you. It mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just honing in on those leadership roles and how they kind of carried me forward to through life. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, that's what we keep exploring and what some of our people we've been talking to kind of call like uh, TV gold is that it really is powerful to hear the value later on of some of the things we might not have thought were so important or impactful. Um, and they, they kind of echo in our lives and, and have, you know, significance. So it's so fun to trace that. So let's yeah. go back there right after Paseo 2004 mm -hmm. coming out into Kansas city. What, mm -hmm. what's your next move? So my next move, I, um, of course was in creative writing with your class. Yeah. And I had a passion for journalism at the time. So I was supposed to go to MU for college. And I went to UMKC instead um, because UMKC gave me scholarships. And so I was able to um, do two years at UMKC plus stay in the dorm and it's essentially for free. And so I was like, I can't pass that deal up. Sorry, MU. Sorry, friends. I'm not going with you. Um, I'm going to UMKC. I'm staying here in Kansas City. Um, and that's what I did. And I, I took advantage of every opportunity at UMKC to learn and grow and do more and essentially see a new side of Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, where I grew up, um, Kansas City has always been, as they call the east of Kansas City, east side of truth. Um, and so that that was really a culture shock for me um, going into UMKC, coming from Paseo, coming from um, where I was from in my community. Um, and it was great. I love the experience. Um, I had a, a awesome time that, you know, whole new class world, um, plethora of friends and just kind of grew from there and stayed in Kansas City, um, be, you know, learning 
everything that I've learned and just essentially made Kansas City my um, hometown, continue having it as my hometown, but still making connections outside of the city. Very good. Yeah, this is a uh, rich place for connections. We're also right in the middle of the entire country. So Correct. <laughs> we can go a lot of places from here. And so that's fantastic. I also found my way to UMKC and have three degrees from there and find it awesome. the great place, like that it really was um, home to me in the same way. I think it's so interesting you point out that Paseo and UMKC are just so near each other. Right. But the culture shock of coming just that far uh, west in our own mm -hmm. city existed. Yep pretty strongly for you so exactly yes yes yeah met a lot of different people <laughs> it tells a lot about our very divided city even in 2004 and even still in in 2022 so agreed bring us up to a little bit after that so you and Casey journey um finished that journey there and then led to another journey or what what happened from you and Casey yeah so um going to UMKC I did end up changing career for focus not so much um, on the journalism path, but went on the marketing public relations path. Um, I, while at UMKC, I did lead the communications club there for maybe two years. Um, so that last final year there, um, went to, uh, did a few internships with some local agencies. Um, I had a chance to study abroad while I was there. Um, so I, and back and through that experience, I was able to backpack through Europe. Um, we studied abroad in Spain while there. I ended up graduating in KC in 2008 with a minor in Spanish, but I don't use it. <laughs> I know Spanglish. I don't know full on Spanish. Gotcha. Um, and then after UMKC, I got my first job um, with a um, in the marketing department with a pet food company that is here in Shawnee, Kansas and still here till this day. Hmm. Um, and that was a different experience for me, another culture shock of <laughs> being there. Um, it's so funny, I, I don't know if I should be telling the story, depending on the audience, but I remember uh, when you have your first job, you have to get used to getting up on time and going to work. And I had an issue with focusing. So I had to start taking diet pills to get me to stay focused at work because I, could, I couldn't, that was the adjustment. When you're college life, you're a little free, you know, set your own schedule, but now it's like, it's work time. So eight to five, you're here <laughs> and you focus on this so you can get, um, do well at this job. And then from there, oh man, um, I ended up going to Webster University um, to go and get a degree in marketing from there. And I'm trying to think, where did I go from there? Gosh, I feel like I went, I did some nonprofit work in public relations. I did, um, at, the, at that point, I think it was when I had to find myself what my gifts were. And so I ended up in property management and real estate with a job, found, um, made some connections again here in Kansas City. Um, with um, some international people that had properties throughout Kansas City, learned from them, got my license, became a broker, and now I'm here. <laughs> so you're, yeah. when you say broker, explain that to maybe a young person that you're, you're a real estate broker. Is that the rest of the term? And then can you yes. kind of define what that job is like? What What does a real estate broker do? Yeah. So um, as a real estate broker, we handle real estate transactions. Um, so the buying and selling of property. I also um, have my own brokerage firm here in Kansas City. I actually co-partner with um, another person here that is actually originally from the Bronx, New York, is my partner. Um, but she's had a brokerage here in um, Kansas City for the past 16 years. Um, partnered with her, um, took over the local branch here in Kansas City. Um, and so we manage a team of about 15 agents who essentially are doing the work of the real estate um, team, which is the buying and selling of real estate properties throughout the metropolitan area. Wow, so that sounds like a very good gig, am I right? Yes, yes, it's, yeah. it's intense, but it's good. <laughs> sounds Depends like, on how the market is doing. <laughs> sounds like you're very involved and potentially a lucrative possibility and a very um, connected to your city possibility. And so yes. yeah, that's really neat. I think that's so cool how you know, staying here myself for so long, it does get deeper and richer. And I think our, our community is growing and expanding. And so you're kind of right in the middle of all that. To some Absolutely. Degree. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of exciting things are happening um, with Kansas City and a lot more to come kind of over the next really five to 10 years. Um, we I've always said, and I've said it since I got my license that 
the Kansas City we're used to is not going to be the same Kansas City in the next five years. We're already seeing um, awesome, you know, um, trends that are happening on the real estate side of things. Uh, I've seen properties when I first started that originally would go for like ten thousand are now worth fifty, sixty thousand that fast. Mm -hmm. um, and and what I've been able to do is kind of capture that. Um, as a real estate broker, um, try to encourage other people to financially change their lives by investing in real estate, buying their first home, becoming an investor myself, um, and even a developer as well. Yeah, so that is kind of separate of your work. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's an intentional goal of yours also is to kind of teach people this process and financial stability goals and things of that nature? Yeah, yeah, to be able to... Um, basically recognized uh, real estate as an avenue to build generational wealth and then the goal for me is to be um one of the um people that are instrumental in changing communities around us which is real estate developers um you know as you mentioned we the, there's two separate worlds still on um depending on east and west in kansas city and there's so much opportunity to do more in either of those worlds but wanting to be kind of that connector that kind of helps divide or waver that line. So you really can't tell the difference. It's all one Kansas City. Wow. Yeah, they tell you it's a rewarding career when you go into education. And I can't explain to you how rewarding it is to hear these stories and to know, not that I had anything to do with it, but that I was there long ago before you you know, had found this path. And to hear you explain it and, and roll it out for this audience is just, it is thrilling. It, it, it's something to be so excited about. I'm, I'm proud of you. I guess thank I would you. say that. Thank and you. Thank you. So let me throw that at you. Not that it was in my class, but it was maybe <laughs> a Paseo. Do you feel like there were things that prepared you when you were at Paseo that, you know, you could even cite some of those experiences that have, have kind of given you this uh, feeling of leadership? You cited one about being mm -hmm. part of uh, student council, but what other kind of day-to-day -day experiences do you think translate even still today? Yeah. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, that was 20 years ago, but I remember some things. Um, definitely the um, writing component of it. Um, uh, writing is very important. Um, and then having to um, learn the um, kind of the language, the um, grammar, that kind of thing, developing that is important. So in the creative writing, telling stories. I remember in your class, we always had to learn how to tell a story. Um, and you, you'll be surprised, even with how things are transforming on social media online, everybody's telling a story. And you, that's part of sales. That's a part of negotiations, tell the story. And so that's always something I've took with me. Um, I do remember, I can't remember his name. I, I just remember it start with a K, but an economics teacher that I had. Um, and he introduced us to um, Department of Labor Statistics and then stocks. I always thought that was interesting. I, I, I kind of wished I would have focused more on that path and learning that. Um, but I, I did take I that I with know. me. Yeah. I I know it. Was it Kit Cubis? Yes. Mr. I think Cubis. that is his name. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Cubis. I remember those assignments and I remember that was a neat part about his class. I know Monaco did some things with that too. Yeah. You probably had him also, right? I did have him. I did have Coach Monaco. <laughs> well, he's still there. And so, is he really? Oh yeah, my gosh. Shout out to probably the longest standing teacher at Paseo right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Monaco, who I've shouted out on this show a number of times, but awesome. he's an impactful guy and he's still there. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you have definitely let us in on a really cool story and a really neat narrative of how you've found your path. The final question is kind of shedding some light on what you told yourself, what words of wisdom, what things you heard from people back then that have served you. And, you know, we keep, I know young people, you're, you're hearing from a really good example of, of someone who followed their goal, listened to their passion, you know, and, and found a way to keep growing, I think. And even, you know, sounds like you're going to continue to aspire to even more in this career. So what, what exactly was being told to you or were you telling yourself that has been powerful throughout all these different challenges, uh, I assume, to get to where we are now? Yes. Oh, man, um, it's a lot. And it's, it changes through the different stages um, and um, variations or, or milestones that you are in life. Um, but the biggest one is diligence. I've always been a hard worker. Um, I, I recognize that even from high school. Um, so diligence is important. Um, your environment is one. I think you can't really progress until you change your environment. So one of the, and even till this day that I um, kind of 
be mindful of is pay attention to who you hang around, um, pay attention to who your influences are. Um, all we, I think we were told in a Hummer class we took, um, pay attention to the top five people you talk to every day. Um, and that will tell you where you're going to go going forward. Um, then what else I learned? Oh, another one I learned this is in, in business. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. <laughs> so if you got to make some noise <laughs> to get, to get what you need and what you want, be an advocate. I took this, be an advocate for yourself. Yeah. Um, it keeps, it keeps squeaking until it gets the oil. Exactly. Right. So if you want to get what you need, you gotta, you gotta make some noise. <laughs> Start right. things up. Yeah. Um, oh man, what else? I think that's, that's, but the, the diligence and, and diligence and persistence, believing in yourself, always believing yourself to do uh, what you can do. And oh, no one get out of your comfort zone. I, that was a big one for me. That is still a big one for me. Yeah. Um, cause I know I, I, I had some very shyness issues in high school and I'm still coming out of that more and more, um, and getting it, but the, what it, I was always told to just get out of your comfortable, comfortable zone and be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Gotcha. Yeah. Those are all fantastic. And what makes them even more fantastic is they're so real to you. And I can hear the way you're explaining them that you really do live by them. So yes. <laughs> that's, why I ask. that's why I ask. So young people, those are fun things to develop. You know, I used to have a thing behind my desk that said the secret to success is constancy to purpose. Mm -hmm. like you're not going to all of a sudden get there one day, or you might because of how many days you were working before you were here. But, you know, you got to keep going at whatever it is that you are pursuing you don't just get to do it once right right or, or dabble you're gonna have to really dig in so yeah that is fantastic advice and um fantastic story and if you are listening today and you like these stories we want to thank most our guests thank you so much to Maisha wright and also to kansas city for tuning in and giving us an ear also help us circulate these stories if you know people that you think would see Maisha as a great example or at least a catalyst to thinking about their own career path um, another reason that we kind of built this episode and started talking about this show uh, is that young people are constantly looking for other examples and often we don't necessarily hear about them all when we're in a class or in school you know and that's why the show life after suddenly all of them become possibilities or uh, things that we didn't even know we could do so as you're watching young people this sounds like a powerful and interesting career uh, it sounds like you get to use a lot of your skills that you learned growing up in school yes. and it sounds like you could do okay in this path as yeah. well right yeah and yeah absolutely absolutely live a, live a pretty good <laughs> lifestyle as a <laughs> as a real estate broker. So let's leave it at this. Uh, Maisha, finish this out. One thing you want to say to Kansas City, because I get to talk to Kansas City every day and tell this place and this background here, how much I love this city and how much I love being a part of it. But what would you tell your city since you've been here so long too, uh, if they were out there listening and I know they are? Oh man, go cheese. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I debated yeah. it this yeah. time. Or you got one? <laughs> well, but I was like, this there you go. That's this red. Like That'll work. <laughs> lumberjack me, but it, you get the point. I got my red everywhere right now. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> no, I think just Kansas City, let's keep evolving. Let's keep growing. I mean, there's excited things happening. So and everyone is welcome. Everyone should be inspired to do whatever they want right here in this city. You don't, you shouldn't have to leave. Speaking of which, did you hear Kansas City is fully accredited as a school? I know, I heard that. And that is awesome news. Congratulations to everybody that was involved in that. A lot of hard work and effort in that. For and to sure. do it and to do it with the with the pandemic, that's even better. You know, it, that's even it better. It means an mm -hmm. awful lot. So respect to all those who've been part of that process and the students, yes. the teachers, everyone involved. So absolutely. Thank Congratulations. you Lisa, for being on the show today. Thank you, Kansas City. We're signing off. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye.